Welcome back. The Reggae Grammy Award has been cloaked in controversy ever since the category was created in 1985. Controversy primarily about who gets nominated and how the winner of the coveted trophy is determined. A major contributing factor to the hullabaloo is lack of understanding in the reggae space about how the system works. Here on stage right now is someone who knows and has been working very hard behind the scenes to not only inform the space, but to also involve the exponents of the music in the process. She is Krista Baba, a Grammy-nominated producer who held executive positions in some of the biggest record companies on the planet. Krista Baba, right now, right here on our stage. Chris. Hi. So good to have you. Yeah. Finally, Chris. Glad to be back. Okay, so all right. So expound for me a little bit on your uh, reggae credentials. Well, I've actually, my reggae credentials, I've yeah. been in the, well, next summer it'll be 25 years I've been in the music industry, in the reggae music industry. Uh -huh. And I've worked at many major labels in the U.S. and from Columbia to Capitol to Electra to Island, um, Island Jamaica to Def Jam Universal and VP Records as well. I've worked there a few times too and worked with every artist that you can imagine from Supercat to Buja Bantan, Beanie Man to Damien and Steven and Marley. You name it, I've pretty much worked with them. Okay, so yeah. you've been working to change things as far as the status of reggae is at the Grammys. Am I correct in putting it that way? Yep, since like 2004 and 2005. Okay, yeah. take it away and tell us what, what you're doing, what you've been doing. Well, when I started to, I was nominated for a Grammy for Def Jamaica mm -hmm. when I worked at Def Jam at Universal. And I started to work a lot with the Recording Academy. And I've worked on several projects that have won Grammy. So I have about 10 different Grammy certificates. So, and just always, been in love with the Grammys since I was a child, so I always was interested in how the process works. Mm -hmm. And I started to get involved more with the Recording Academy and found out that there's a lot of problems that we have with the, rec with, with the voting process, and a lot of people weren't educated on how the whole thing really worked, and I really wanted to become an expert in it and educate people, especially in my genre, and reggae exactly, of the problems that we have in our necessary category, ways to fix it, and ways for people to get educated to just kind of trying to change it. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing media on this for about 10 years now, and this year has been a very big, we've had a very big achievement this year in it, but it's um, it's been slow moving, but you know, I need to, I can, yeah, I but, stay the fight, and whoever wants to learn about it, I'm willing to teach them. All right, because, uh, yes, we've noticed a difference this year. Yeah. We could recognize mm -hmm. four or five, at least four, right. of five nominees. We, we, people would say, yeah, these guys deserve to be nominated. Right. And they were familiar, most of them, to the reggae crowd, yep. especially in the, on, from the Jamaican perspective. So what did you do to change that? Why is it now just... Why, is it, why does it take so long for there to be uh, a difference? Well, the several issues that we've had within our category is one, the problem is, is when I started this about 10 years ago, there was only one voting member on the island of Jamaica. Yes. And so people weren't understanding of the process, uh, what creative credentials meant, how they actually were able to become a voting member. Nobody really knew about it. So that's okay. why that happened, not to mention, about uh, 10 years ago, there was only there was only maybe 15,000, 20,000 voters in the overall academy. Yes. So the, the situation is is that the people who ten, you have 120 categories, and the people who come over to our category are not great. It's not a great amount of numbers, but the people who tended to come over and vote into our category was like for a lack of a better analogy, uh, a white man in his 40s who lived in Minnesota. So, you know, when you'd see the first ballot come through, which would have all of the right albums that came out that year, he wouldn't necessarily be in the know of what really was successful in the genre that year, as we would know. But he'd look at it and go, oh, oh, wow, I love Jimmy Cliff, or I, oh, oh, I love, you know, he'd know the Lee Scratch Perrys and the people that, you know, he's in his 40s. These were, is who mm -hmm. he was a fan of or who he was exposed to. So he would vote for his favorites. He would wouldn't be aware of who an Atana was or a Taurus was because he's not really in the reggae industry. He's probably a man who plays, you know, the violin in classical. You never know. You know, it's just yes. somebody coming to visit our category, not necessarily eating, drinking, and sleeping it, knowing the new artists and the people were very successful and the ones that were kind of running the road down here and all that. He was just kind of voting so for the name he knew. Right. From and, who they're familiar with, basically. Ex right. Yes. So then I knew that the problem we had, or what I discovered was, is that the people in the know weren't voting. It was the people that were fans of the music, but were only exposed in fans of the people, of the names they recognized. Okay. So a lot of times, it, we had that problem in our category more times than 
you know, more times than a carrot account, that that was, you know, the name recognition thing is but really a problem for But why were they voting? It. Was it because they're not members of NARAS? Well, yeah, well, the Reporting Academy, yeah. I mean, like I said, when I started this campaign, there was one voting member on the island of Jamaica. And you know Jamaica is where the bulk of our industry is. This mm -hmm. is where the bulk of our, anybody with the creative credentials that we have, the majority of the people, especially 10 years ago, sat here in Jamaica. You know what I mean? So okay. if you only have one voting member, you have to think, well, who are the people who are actually voting? You know what I'm saying? So it obviously were people that really were a part of our industry. There were some, you know, because I've been a voting member for over a decade, but that's just a handful of people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the amount of people that we need to actually represent. Is there our a category. limit on how many people can 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 become members? No, not at all. No not limits. at all. No. The Recording Academy is the foundation. So any money that comes into the Recording Academy goes to um, you know, music in schools, you know, the Grammy Foundation, the great work that they do on um, on um, on the hill and in the capital of the United mm -hmm. States to change laws in publishing and stuff like that. So no, they are very. I mean, they are very excited about this campaign that I've been running for ten years because it brings money into the Recording Academy Foundation. So as many, if you have the creative credentials, they would love to have you as a member. That's the word, mm -hmm. creative credentials. Mm -hmm. Right. So what is that exactly? Well, all you have to do is have six creative credentials that the Recording Academy deem creative. And if I, I'll start running them off to you, and like I said, you're going to know a thousand people down here that have mm -hmm. them. Um, the artist, recording mm -hmm. artist, and these all have to be people who have done six things uh, of, of records that have been released in the United States, because the Grammys is a U.S. Yes. award. So an artist, mm -hmm. um, a musician, a mixing engineer, a recording engineer, a, uh, a video director, a video producer, um, somebody who writes the liner notes, somebody who designs the record covers. Mm -hmm. These are all people that are con considered creative people. Okay. So if you think of, I'll use for example, let's say um, Damian Marley, I'll use him as an example. It, he doesn't have to even necessarily put out six albums. He can just be featured on six tracks. Once you have six, you can sign up to be a member. And then you could say you retire the next year, but you will always be a member if you pay up uh, your membership. Mm -hmm. You only have to have those first initial six credits. So, there so are think of all of those of people. Jamaicans we have, qualified. We, have, we have thousands of people yes. who have the ability to be a voter. And what does it cost? What's the process of well, getting it? Well, they have different and, and, payment plans that are on there, but the basis is it's 100 US a year. And then if you buy two years, it comes down to, I think, like 250 and then three years, it's like three. It, it gets less and less if you buy it in packages. Okay. But let's, I mean, like I said, a lot of people have complained to me, $100. Are you kidding me? The artists that we have, I mean, you that's like 10 times a dub plate you might charge if you're yes. hot. I mean, $100 isn't hard to find if you care enough to want to be a part of the process. There's a way to find 100 U.S. just to make sure you keep your membership dues up. But trust me, there's a lot of us that don't. So those who decide uh, who is nominated are the same people who decide who wins? Yes, the Grammy voting members. So they vote twice? Mm -hmm. There's they two ballots. They vote for the, the nominee, yep. for the nomination. Right. They nominate the albums. Right. And then they vote for who they think is the best one among all the, right. the, the ones that are submitted. So, so Chris, um, Just Stone, Reggae Artist of the Year by Billboard Magazine. Right, correct. Why was she not nominated for the Grammys? Well, she did make it through the screening committee process. Her album was deemed a reggae record. And that's where I feel like we made strides this year in our category. And I'd like to think that my 10-year campaign had something to do with it. Um, the, grant, the, the Recording Academy voters didn't nominate her. She made it on the first ballot. Yes. But she wasn't one of the top five. So knowing that now that we've got people, Morgan Heritage has never been nominated for a Grammy, let alone won until this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I've always said this in my campaign, Barris has been nominated, but has never won. These have been two of my biggest examples. And we finally broke the glass ceiling with Morgan Heritage. Just that if it was really the number one reggae artist in the world, I know everybody's upset about it. You would have won the Grammy and you didn't. Morgan Heritage did. Oh. So. <laughs> so fear not. If I want to be a voter mm -hmm. for, the, for the next Grammy, right? Right? can I start the process now and get, yes, and you get can start ready the process for that? Now. For, for First off, I say this all the time. I've been in the industry for 25 years. Yeah. I'm not hard to find. I'd, any artist or any, any musician, anybody that's in, in this industry that wants to know the process, that might forget what I'm saying right now, find me. Because yes. I have no problem saying it again and 100 times again. Go to Grammy.com. Mm -hmm. mem the membership form is right there. You have to have six creative cr credentials, and very importantly, what the what the Grammy will what the Grammys will accept is you have to have a CD booklet that has your name as that credit, or they do acknowledge a uh, .com site called AllMusic.com. Mm -hmm. So you do have to you can't just put an application. Oh, I've produced these records. You have to have to show proof. Yes. So the proof they accept are CD booklets. 
and they approve whatever's listed under your name as a musician or an artist or a producer on allmusic.com. So those are, besides filling out your application, you actually have to have the proof of those six creative credentials, which again is not that hard to do. Mm -hmm. And then you pay your membership right there and boom, you're a voting member. Okay. It's that simple. All you have to do is have six published work. Yep. That's it. Six something that you've published <laughs> in whatever field you're in, in the music, with creative credentials. Chris, it's so good to have you. Wonderful well, information. I'm sure people are excited and will. I hope, I hope, I hope. I, 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 I'm actually calling on you to go and get involved because I've been to Grammys three times and there are so much about it that you could help your career, so much behind the scenes. You need to be there. They were asking for Bounty Killer that year in the media room, the biggest journalist in the world, entertainment journalist in the entire world, in one place, asking where is Bounty Killer, when no doubt won that award in which, they, they, for that song that Bounty was featured mm -hmm. in. Everybody's asking, where is Bounty Killer in that room? <laughs> All right, Chris, thank you so much. Well, there you have it. Right here in the segment, Chris Barber. And we hope you will take action right now to be a member of the Grammy Voting Academy. Stay with us. Still to come right here on Stay. Long time you want a man like you. Kevin the Doctor, Lights Fire with RR. Joe Bogdanovich unveils plans to re-energize the greatest reggae show on earth, Reggae Sum Fest. And dancehall pioneer Charlie Chaplin, believe it or not, brings his first ever music video to our stage. All coming up. We'll be back. Hi, thanks for watching our video. Hope you have enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking right here. And enjoy so much more where that came from. Where's that now? It's in the hands of the law. The law? Yeah. So, so it's in court? Not yet, but hopefully, as I'm saying, the, the, police. the, law, the police are dealing with it right now.